Are you tired of searching for Great Talk Radio? Well, search no more. We are the GCN Radio Network. Crushing through the lies and disinformation. It's Alex Jones. The powerful corporate interests that are setting up world government want to do that so that no one nation or confederation of nations can stand against them. They want a world dictatorship through central banks of the issuance of currency, credit, liquidity. In 1945, the United States founded the United Nations. People running our government act like they're mad at it and it's liberal and it's out of control. Though the U.S., of course, gives more than half of the funds to the U.N. This is all theater. And the United Nations openly in Unidir documents from the 60s, 70s, 80s, some of the most memorable in July of 2000 in the summit they had in New York, where international treaties were signed, where they openly stated that the civilian abolition, the abolition of civilian, that's us, the people, ownership of even small arms, handguns, rifles, is their goal. And is the United Nations goal and the U.S. goal. So the government's goal is taking your guns. They could care less about a school shooting here or there. They hype the daylights out of it. They create this perception that it's happening all the time like terrorism. And then their answer is always more gun control on law-abiding citizens. This person had been in and out of mental institutions. How this person ever got into the Army, I have the AP, no one knows. He gets out, and he goes in and kills 15 people, including himself being among the 15. And then when I say copycat, they, they hype and hype and hype until mentally ill people out there that are on these serotonin reuptake inhibitors, the Prozac family of drugs, that close to 20% of the American people are now on, every time, every time we see in the news a woman cuts her baby's arms off up in Fort Worth, or a woman drowns her babies in Houston, or a woman in Wisconsin drives her children over a cliff into the water, every time I go, watch, they're going to be on it, or they're going to be just gone off of it, which makes you even go crazier. You go off of them, you got to go off very slowly. If you're on these, you got to go off over a month or two. I've seen the reports and how doctors say you're supposed to do it. Because then you'll actually have like violent LSD-type hallucinations. Because the serotonin reuptake inhibitors are in the hallucinogen class. That is in the cl that's the class that their molecular structure is in. That's the areas of the brain it affects. This is hardcore stuff. And it's designed according to the fluoride molecule. Now... Finishing up with this. So now you have these mental cases who, who think, well, I'm going to commit suicide. How am I supposed to do that? And it introduces it into their minds. I go out, and it's what I'm supposed to do, and it's hyped up. I go out, and I shoot a bunch of people. And also, in almost every case we've seen, they've been avid gamers, obsessed with shoot 'em up video games, which also desensitizes them for instinctive firing. Doom, the video game, was invented by the military. You know, now we're ten generations into it. These shoot 'em ups because they found in World War One only about five percent would shoot somebody up close. World War Two with paper targets popping up, they trained them uh, for about twenty percent of the time they would shoot somebody they were up close. By by Vietnam, it was over eighty percent. Now they have ninety five. Go look up the numbers. Plus percent of our troops because of video games that the military has them play, and most of them already played them earlier. I played them growing up, we'll shoot somebody up close. We were instinctively didn't want to kill our fellow man even up close. That's why most people can't win a fight, folks, with your fist. Most people won't turn loose all the way and totally, you know, beat the daylights out of somebody. Because if you do, you'll kill somebody. Most people hold back a little. We have that engineered into us. But by simulating killing hundreds of thousands of times, and that's on average, sometimes it's higher, in these shoot 'em up games, it desensitizes you. So they're, they're playing shoot 'em up games. They're on hardcore psychotropic drugs. It's introduced into their head with constant newscasts about mass shootings that that's what you're supposed to do when you go crazy. It, it, see, it gives them the idea. Here's another case. You can go pull the federal numbers on this. Suicide in public schools has gone up several thousand percent. Children as young as 10 routinely hanging themselves now. Why before, or taking a bunch of pills? Back in the early 80s, into the early 90s, you, you never heard of it. Who ever heard of teenage suicide? Who ever heard of adolescent suicide? Who ever heard of 9 and 10 year olds committing suicide? Now it's up several thousand percent, more than 2,000 percent. Why? The feds in 1992 started death education through federal curriculum through state funding. And now the schools start telling eight-year-olds about suicide. 
Eight-year-olds never thought about suicide. Eight-year-olds never had the class sit up there and talk about, now don't commit suicide when you're depressed. Don't hang yourself. Of course you start talking. Look, I'm all for some, quote, sex education. You know, these are parts of your body, this and that. But not when they're five, six, seven years old. Studies in Europe and the U.S. also show you start teaching children graphic stuff about sex when they're young, it makes them have more sex. Why is that? Because you've now taught them about it. I mean, when I was six years old, we didn't have sex education. I certainly wasn't thinking about sex. I wasn't even, I had no idea about sex till I was like 10, 11 years old. Then I'd be around the 14, 15 year old kids playing baseball and they'd be bragging about, you know, all the girlfriends they had. And I'm sure lying. And I, and I remember being about 10, 11, believing, you know, the 12, 13, 14 year olds, uh, well, gosh, I don't have a girlfriend. I'm not out doing all this. I'm, I'm behind the times. <laughs> See? It's, it's human nature, ladies and gentlemen. Europe, 15 years ago, and there's big news articles out on this, massively increased the amount of anti-cigarette smoking ads, put up huge billboards all over Europe and all over Canada as well, showing people on respirators saying don't smoke. You know what happened when they did that? Buy a pack of cigarettes in Europe. I've done it. I've smoked off and on. I have real problems with it. It's got people. The whole cover of the cigarette pack is a guy on a respirator. Do you know what happened when they did that? Cigarette smoking massively increased. It doubled. Don't believe me? Just type into Google, cigarette smoking du doubles in Europe after ad campaign. You start teaching kids about suicide, suicide. You start saying, don't commit suicide. Don't come in with a gun and shoot everybody. Now you've introduced it into their mind. And they've had all these video games. I've seen them in the news where you kidnap and torture children to get bonus powers like Dungeon Keeper. They have other games where you rape a prostitute and don't pay her the money and then steal her money, uh, and, and then you get more money. Uh, it's, it's one of those games where you're running over people in a car. I remember seeing it on the news. I mean, that's the type of thing our young people are learning to do. So you have a criminal corporate government that's not free market. You have these global corporations that have banded together to buy off and take control and lobby and take control of governments to set up world government so they can get rid of our Bill of Rights and Constitution and bypass that. You go look at who funds world government. It's the Fortune 500. They want it. They're the ones pushing it. They want to disarm you as well. I mean, I've got reports right here. I'm sure you've all heard about the case. They finally uh, caught the guy who went in uh, to his, uh, in Maryland, into his psychiatrist office, but he wasn't there. Or he, he didn't see him. And so he starts hacking the other psychiatrist in the office next to her uh, up with a meat cleaver. I mean, if, 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 if I was going to be a psychiatrist working with psychopaths, and admittedly, he'd been in institutions, he was a complete nut, why wouldn't you have an instant access pistol safe in your drawer? I got one in my home office, I got one in my bedroom, I got one upstairs in my radio booth at my physical office where I do my, I mean, I got one right there, 357 Magnum. If somebody comes in there with a meat cleaver, baby, they're gone real fast. I'm not going to sit there and squeal and get down on the floor and start squealing like a rabbit when a wolf comes up to grab it. I'm sorry. But this woman, and I'm sad for her, got down on her knees and begged and pleaded while this guy took a meat cleaver. Somebody bust into my door. In two seconds, man, right underneath the table. Doo -doo -doo -doo, boom. Door pops open, slides out, handgun. You're dead. And that's only because i got children in my house. Before I had children, those suckers were in the drawer. They weren't even in an instant access pistol safe. Okay? Stop being so afraid of guns. I have seen, quote, liberals. You're not liberals. You're domesticated. You, when you see a cop in a black ski mask with a submachine gun, oh, you feel safe. Oh, good. But you see a citizen. Listen, here in Texas now, you can't drive around. There's no law against it. But you can't drive around with a rifle in your rack. Notice you don't see that anymore. You know why you don't see it anymore? Because they'll call the cops on you. Every few weeks I see a report in Austin or around the country where they call SWAT teams out to an apartment complex. And they'll say, we saw a man with a rifle. And nine times out of ten, it's always during deer season, Colorado, Texas, wherever, the guy's going hunting. I had a carpet cleaner at my house like ten years ago. Saw a shotgun in a rack in my broadcast studio out of my house. He got ready to call the police on me. He'd seen cop shows that are all based in New York or Chicago where they go, oh, you got an illegal gun, both fiction and nonfiction. So he thought guns were illegal. He was a chicken neck, domesticated piece of trash. We'll be right back. Stay with me. Your calls, I promise, are straight ahead.